want you to try something for me. Sit as still as you possibly can. Don't move. Try telling the person sitting next to you that you're hungry and you're only allowed to use your eyes. Tell them that you're hungry. Hard, isn't it? This is what ALS patients have to live with after they've been told that they only have a couple more years left to live. ALS is a horrible disease. ALS stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, and it's a motor neuron degenerative disease which cuts off the signals that go from your brain to your muscles. So as you have ALS, over time, you lose the ability to move. And this disease actually affects hundreds of thousands of people around the world, um, including Mr. Scott Hollinger. This man was the inspiration for my project, which I then entered into the North Museum Science and Engineering Fair. He used to be a Marine. He was everything that you think of when you picture a Marine in your head. He was strong and confident and full of vitality. And ALS robbed that of him. But today he has a lovely family and two children and this faith that is undeterred. And that is what inspired me to learn more about this disease and how it works. I learned that 50%, 50% of ALS patients die within the first two years of diagnosis. So it's a very relevant disease and it needs our attention. To give you an idea of what this looks like in the human body, here is a picture of two motor neurons. So on the left you can see is the healthy motor neuron and on the right is the one that's all shriveled up because of ALS. It is dysfunctional and the, even the muscles all atrophied. So why does this happen? Scientists think what may be linked to the cause of ALS is oxidative stress. So the way this works is that there's an enzyme in all of our bodies called HSOD1. That stands for human superoxide dismutase 1. It's simply this enzyme that's really, really important to us for protecting our motor neurons from oxidative stress so that we don't develop things like ALS. In a, in a normal human body, HSOD1's function is to take highly reactive, harmful superoxide-free radicals and turn them into the much less harmful substances of hydrogen peroxide and oxygen. So it's really important. These free radicals are, are the bad guys, and HSOD1 here is the good guys trying to save us. So what are free radicals? Well, they're just these things that are floating around the air. They're, in, they're everywhere. They're in the food and air and water we consume, and they're completely unavoidable. <coughs> But they can be cleaned up, and that's what HSOD1's job is, to protect us from those free radicals that enter our body. So what does that really mean in plain English? Well, my mother is a lot like HSOD1, because after a long, hard week of school, my desk is cluttered with teacups and pencils and papers, and it's just a complete mess. And she comes in, she waves her magic wand, and whoosh, it's all perfect and clean again, and it's all back to normal, and I can breathe again. Um, but you can imagine what it looks like when she's sick. It's not pretty. Um, in fact, the whole house, the whole family is completely a mess when my mother is sick. That's why we want her healthy again. Um, so in the chemical terms, what this means is that HSOD1, sometimes due to mutation or some other unknown cause, begins to clump up, and it aggregates, and it forms these disulfide bonds onto itself, and that's how it misfolds, as you can see in this image. And this actually, at this process of oxidation, this oxidative stress is not only linked to ALS, it is also linked to Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease. It's a very widespread issue. So maybe if we tackled it for ALS, we might have a direction in some of these other diseases. So, what does this oxidation actually look like? Well, pretend this paper is HSOD1. It's really nice and clean and not crumpled up yet. And each of these corners is a thiol. And a thiol is simply that R and the SH. So it's, the R represents anything, and a thiol is just anything with a sulfur and a hydrogen attached to it. So these thiols 
are the corners, and this is H slot one. And what happens in oxidation, this misfolding, is that these thiols join up to form a disulfide bond. This is a disulfide bond, it's the two sulfurs link up. And when there are many thiols, these many corners join up, and then the paper just becomes useless. This H sod one is completely useless. And now, when H sod one is in this form, we are completely vulnerable to oxidative stress, and that is how ALS comes about. So my job in science fair is to unfold H sod one. Not very unfolded yet, but. <laughs> so that's what this uh, aggregation is all about, this misfolding. And we want to uncrumple H sod one so that it can protect us again. So scientists three years ago decided they would try to reverse this process of oxidation or at least slow it down. So what they did was use a chemotherapy drug which is called cisplatin. Cisplatin has been used since the 1960s for cancer and after they did some in vitro tests, they found that it works as a reducer. So what cisplatin does is it goes into these H sod one enzymes and it breaks those disulfide bonds that cause it to stick to itself. So that's how it works. It works really well in vitro, however, in vivo, cisplatin has some severe side effects, such as permanent hearing loss, blindness, kidney damage, and even a second cancer. So not ideal for someone who's already dying from ALS. Um, so my goal was in this uh, phase of science fair to choose my project at this point. And I, d I was so at a loss. I didn't know if I wanted to choose a project of testing cisplatin on H sod one enzymes or if I wanted to try something new. I had no idea what I was going to do if I had to discover something. Would my results come out right? Would there be enough knowledge in the field? Would I do my research correctly? I was so scared of that unknown path. But I was reminded that if I reproduce something that's already been done, what am I accomplishing? I remembered science fair is all about adding to the field of knowledge, discovering new things and having new ideas and building off of other people's ideas. But most of all, I remembered Mr. Hollinger. If I do something that's already been done before, I'm not helping him. And I did science fair not for the grade. I wanted to help other people. I wanted to help people like Mr. Scott Hollinger who are suffering every day. So I decided to take a new path. So it was really scary because I had to read all these scientific journals. And I'm sure a few of you have read scientific journals before and maybe understand them, but for a sophomore who has never taken a chemistry course before until this year, Scientific journals were so hard to understand. They were, I didn't know which way to hold up the paper. I didn't, know, I, I didn't know anything. It was practically written in a different language, like Latin and Greek. I didn't know how to read them. And so after a lot of help and guidance from my teachers, I finally understood that the cisplatin was going into these enzymes and breaking the disulfide bonds. So I thought, why don't I find something else that does the same thing but is less harmful? So I chose to use an antioxidant. Now, I chose an antioxidant because it would work the same way as the cisplatin. It would reverse this process of oxidation, as you can see. It would take that disulfide bond and break it. And that's why it's called an antioxidant for antioxidation. So what I did was to choose L-arginine. And L-arginine is an amino acid with very strong antioxidant properties. And you can even buy it over the counter. So that's convenient. And so in my experiment, I tested these different um, treatments on my H sod one enzymes, and to, I had to figure out how clumped up are my enzymes after the different solutions and the different treatments. So to do this, I was detecting thiols, those corners of the paper. I wanted to find out how many thiols there were because when one disulfide bond breaks, two thiols are formed. This ultimately means that the more thiols there are, the less aggregated the H sod one enzymes are, which means potentially the slower the progression of ALS. So I was detecting thiols to measure how clumped up these enzymes were. 
To do this, I was using a SpectroViz spectrophotometer. That sounds fancy, but it's really just a little box that's smaller than a toaster, and it shines a single wavelength of light through this solution, and the device just measures how intense the color of that solution is. It basically measures how much light that solution can absorb. So, to my luck, files are colorless. <laughs> so I had to, in the midst of all this crazy science fair stuff, I had to synthesize a chromine thiol detecting agent. It sounds fancy again, but it's just this, this solution that when I combined it with my other solutions, it reacted with these thiols and turned them yellow. So as you can see, it's the transition from the colorless thiols to the yellow thiols. That way, the SpectroViz could detect them. So after I did 40 days of spectrophotometry readings, I obtained these results. So as you can see on the bottom, uh, the x-axis is time, and on the y-axis is thiol concentration. And again, we definitely want more thiols because it means our enzymes that are the good guys are less crumpled up, so they're healthier. So on the bottom is my negative control. And basically, I, I, I had made five solutions. My negative control, which was my crumpled up HLOD1 enzyme with no treatment. My positive control was um, to that I added cisplatin. And for my other three test solutions, to all of that, I had added varying concentrations of the l arginine to see if the antioxidant had an effect. So from going from bottom to top on this graph, I'll explain to you the results. So the bottom is my negative control. It just was the crumpled up HSOD1, no treatment. And as you can see, it stayed relatively flat over the 40 days, and this is due to the fact that there was no treatment to break up the disulfide bond, so that's not expected. That's completely, um, that, that was expected, rather. <laughs> and the positive control was the black dotted line that contained the cisplatin only. That did increase over time, and again, that's not surprising because that's what uh, scientists have already discovered, that cisplatin works as a reducer to break these disulfide bonds. The three solutions that those other three colored lines represent the solutions that contained the added <coughs> L-arginine. And they increased dramatically over the 40 days. In fact, by the 40th day, the, that blue line, the solution with the most L-arginine in it, had over 400 percent more, was over 400 percent more concentrated with thiols than the positive control, which was that black dotted line and just contains this platin. So that 400% number is huge. That means that this antioxidant, which you could get over the counter, is doing an extremely effective job in unclumping these enzymes, which are so important for us. So it would be my dream to see this project furthered one day. And after seeing this graph, you might be thinking to yourself, well, you put a lot of um, L-arginine, that treatment, in the blue solution, and then a lesser concentration of the treatment in the positive control. But that's actually the whole point of this, because the um, cisplatin is quite harmful, so even a small dosage would harm a patient, whereas even um, a larger concentration of L-arginine would not be so harmful. I can afford to increase its concentration. So that's the whole point of this. And for a next step, maybe I or some other scientist with more resources could test this idea on live tissue or in mice or maybe in vivo one day to see if the L arginine 9 does have an effect. And um, antioxidants have been tested on motor neuron disease patients before. However, the results were unsuccessful. And I think this might be due to the fact that they had no targeted drug delivery system. So if I in were to inject you with cisplatin, it goes throughout your entire body, which is why you have the awful side effects. So if we had a way to target this drug, it would be a lot more effective without being harmful. One way scientists are thinking of doing this is by using nanosponges. Nanosponges are just these nanoparticles which are able to absorb a drug, carry it to the site where it's needed, and release it there so that it's contained in that area and it doesn't flood the body. And this drug delivery would play a key role as to how l arginine might work in the human body. I learned through this project that the best drug there is today for ALS extends a person's lifespan by an average of three months. So some people get more than that, some people get less, but that three months number gave me a huge sense of urgency that I have to do something to give these ALS patients some kind of reprieve. 
You might be thinking to yourself, well, this is awesome. You've cured ALS. Um, that is not the case. I wish I did, but I did not cure ALS. Uh, there's no known cure for ALS. However, I did find an antioxidant which, in combination with cisplatin, is doing a tremendously beneficial job in unclumping these HLAD1 enzymes, which are extremely important for protecting us from things that might cause ALS. So even though I haven't cured ALS, I'm hoping and I'm praying and I'm working as fast as I can to further this project so that maybe one day, maybe one day, people like Mr. Hollinger will not have to be robbed of their vitality. Thank you.